No matter if you're a broke artist, hobbyist, or just looking to get into creating some art, you're going to come across items or tools that might be out of your price range. Or maybe you're uncertain if you need those items. So I have a list of items that are a little on the expensive side and ways to hack them from household goods or just cheap items. The first one is the tool roll up. This is like a pencil case holder. What you need for this is either um, one of those bamboo mats. I got mine at the Dollar Tree. I think I also picked a couple of them up at the um, Asian food store that we have here in town. They're usually a dollar and some change. I did cut mine to fit um, inside of my pencil bag on the ends. But the other item you're gonna need is ribbon. That's it, no sew, no glue. Um, you can see I'm measuring out how many spaces my utensils are gonna need. I went with the fattest item that I had on my desk, which was my mechanical pencil from Art Snacks. And it took three slots across, so I skipped three, and then from the back side I skipped three, and that's how I wove this ribbon all the way down to the end. And of course, put your items in. Pull the ribbon tight so everything stays in there nice and snug. You can see nothing fell out. I'm going to go ahead and weave the last few sections and then we're going to roll it up. Um, if you don't want to seek out one of these mats and you don't already have one, a piece of felt works. Um, you can just cut slits all the way down the length of the felt and weave your ribbon in and out it works pretty much the same way. And felt is very inexpensive. It's only like 20 cents, I think, a, a sheet. All right, so this last part, I w put the ribbon through the last segment towards the string that was already there. And then I pulled each side away from each other around to the front and tied it in a bow. And that's it. Easy peasy. And you can see it fits into my pencil case. Keep everything nice and secure. This way my leads won't get all ruffled up. Next item is texture tools. Um, when I was in Hobby Lobby, I noticed that the texture tools they have in the acrylic section are anywhere from like five bucks up to like $17.99. It's a little expensive. So if you have scissors, marker, X-Acto knife, a gift card or award card, or styrofoam from meat or vegetable tray, you can make your own. You can see I already have my balance rewards card here that I never use. I've scribbled some patterns on here so that I can cut them out. Um, I did kind of a zigzag so I could have some very triangular uh, textures and you know very thin lines. Um, I did some curvy ones. I did some wider um, just regular triangle sh or rectangle shapes. Um, to get the curvy uh, texture you would just want to make um, like you were just doing um, a checker pattern or a stamp edge almost to make sure all of the pieces are cut off and then you're just going to round the edges on each one. So. This way you don't have to try and cut curves for each one with this hard plastic. And I noticed with the styrofoam it's so much easier. Um, using styrofoam, it's pretty resistant to paint and water. Reusability isn't as good as one of these cards, but it holds up pretty good. You can rinse it and reuse it a few times. Whizzing through with the X-Acto knife around those corners was quick and easy. Uh, I if you just want a one-time use item and all you have is cardboard, cardboard will work in a pinch. I've seen people uh, tear open two liter containers to use the plastic from that as well. And pretty much anything you have on hand you could make shift into a texture tool. I'll just give you a little visual of this tool can do. Another house
household item that comes in really handy, um, mainly with acrylic paint, is using baking soda as a thickening agent for your paint. Yeah, some people want super good thick textures, and if you can't afford to buy texture paste or any kind of uh, gel medium to thicken up your paint, you can just put a teaspoon or so of baking soda into your paint, stir it in really good, and apply it. It gives you some really good height and thickness and texture. or metal bottle caps. I snagged some from the water bottles that we've been drinking out of. You can also use bottle caps because they are household sponge, either glue stick or glue that will hold up to weather and wetness, like E6000. You can see I've already put some watercolor in these bottle caps, but for this quick tutorial I'm just going to use the water bottle plastic caps. Clean off the desk here. Check my glue gun, it's heating up. So first you wanna measure your sponge. If you want the sponge in there, um, I found this was really handy to have. You can wet it to wipe your brush off. You can use it for texture in your, your paintings that you're doing. It also stabilizes the bottle caps while they're in there. So you can see I'm gonna start with the plastic, the very see-through plastic. I'm gonna cut it to fit. I'm going to cut the uh, plastic from the orange juice container to fit as well. And if you just want to do one layer, you could fit the plastic to fit the entire container and just cut your sponge in half so it lays flat across the bottom to secure your, your paint. So then from there, we're just going to hot glue the caps onto the plastic. I would suggest lightly sanding the plastic and the bottoms of the caps just so that there's a little more roughness so that the glue holds really tight. I'm going to do two rows because the bottle caps are not very tall, so you can fit two layers in there, which means I will have eight options for colors. And of course, if you don't want the sponge in there, you can fit up to 12 because you can do six across the top and six across the bottom. And you can see it fits very nicely in there. Very little rattle. Ooh, so nice. You can also decorate your tin any way you want. You can just sand the box down, paint it, glue things to it, personalize it. I love this idea because it's so small and it's something that you would probably already have in your bag or your purse. All right, so from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and goo these up with some paint. Put a couple dabs in here so I can make a mixed arrangement of colors, maybe some pinks, some blues, some oranges, some green. Um, I just have these three tubes of Grumbacher that I just got and it's been fun trying to mix my own ratios of colors. So we're going to stack them up and toss the sponge in there. Now I plan on just carrying one of my refillable water paint brushes with me. And I've seen a lot of people cut um, some watercolor paper and do a swatch sheet so that you can just tuck that into the lid as well. And the more narrow around the edges you put these or cut these papers, the better they're going to fit in there. So you want to make sure that it's still able to close. I cut three pieces out of my watercolor paper 
you know, just to test it out. You might be wondering why the bottle caps. Well, I looked online and no matter what place I looked to get just the watercolor pans, the pans themselves are usually under a dollar, but then you have to pay shipping. And the shipping on Amazon was around $3.99 and the price of the pan was 33 cents. Um, I already have a palette that's I think a little bit too heavy for me to take with me to travel. So I could just stick them in the tin without gluing them down, just kind of securing them in there with the sponge. All right, next on my list is Lightbox. This one is huge. Can you see the price tag on that? $169.99. Ah, my goodness. Here's a free option. Use your window. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to spend $120 or $170. Although I'm sure on Amazon you can find a, a decent Lightbox for, for cheap. Maybe like around 30 bucks, but who really wants to spend that much money? Um, the only limitations of using your window, obviously, is your limitations of light source. When it's dark outside, phew, nope, not gonna work. So you would have to do it before the sun goes down. For someone like me, I like to work late at night. Not an option. Plastic drawer. This one has come in handy so many times for me because I keep my art supplies in these plastic drawers. If you guys saw my work tour video, you saw I have a stack of these drawers. Um, you just flip one over and put a light source underneath. You could use a desk lamp, a table lamp, whatever lamp you have, even if you just have a string of Christmas lights, you could stick them underneath the box. And then put your paper on top. Cheap and easy and stuff you probably already have around your house. Of course, these options aren't good for travel, but I don't know many people who travel with their light boxes. So if you're just you know, seeking out another option to save a little bit of money, I would suggest any of these. Um, my drafting table is a glass top drafting table, so I can utilize it as a light box. And I apologize for the shakiness of the camera. It really wasn't even that shaky, but when I edited the video, and I put the stabilization on, it started to make it seem way shakier than it was. The camera was on a tripod, so I'm confused. But you can see, I went ahead and taped down my picture, I put my blank paper on top, and underneath my desk has um, a couple bars. I just clipped my work lamp underneath. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas for hacks, that you've come across that you want to see in action or items that you've never seen a hack for but are really curious if there's a way to make it from household items just let me know in the comments down below so don't forget to click on my face to subscribe or if you're already subscribed hit the bell so you're notified when new videos come up and i will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching